Okay, so today we're going to do cranking compression. Cranking compression tests the integrity of the cylinder. It tests the cylinder sealing. So we're going to check to see do the ring seal and do the valve seal. So to do that, I need to make sure my engine is at operating temperature. I'm going to take all the spark plugs out of the engine because I want to have enough cranking RPM. I want the engine to spin fast enough so that we have that. I'm going to disable my fuel system either by disconnecting my injectors or pulling my fuel pump relay. So otherwise what will happen is the first cylinder might have higher compression than the last cylinder because by the time I get to the last cylinder the fuel has washed the seal on the rings and I'm not going to have as good a compression. Not as much of a problem here on a four cylinder as I'd have on an eight cylinder but that's where I want to do that. The other thing you're going to see me do when I do the cranking compression is before I do each compression test I'm going to open the throttle all the way while I'm cranking because I don't want the restriction of the throttle plate in the way of my compression test because that will lower my compression because I'm restricting airflow. So for the tools I'm going to use for this today, I'm going to use a cordless here for the 10 millimeters to take all the coils off and the other brackets off. I'm going to use my compression gauge and compression gauge hose and I have them right here in my toolbox. So here is my compression gauge and a compression gauge hose. I'm also going to need my spark plug socket extension and ratchet. And one of the things I'm going to do to make my job easier is I'm going to use a remote starter. And what the remote starter does is it goes onto the S terminal of my starter and onto the battery terminal or battery cable. And anytime I push this button, it makes the engine crank over. So this makes it a lot easier for me by myself to watch the gauge and also crank the engine over. If I was to do this on a car where it's hard to access or I can't do that, I'd want to put the gauge in a place where I could see the gauge while I'm cranking the engine over from inside the car. But it's a little easier for me today because I'm working on this stand engine. I'm going to use the remote starter and introduce you to that. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start taking this engine apart. Now one of the things I'm using today is a magnetic uh, socket and as I go and pull some of these that are a little harder for my fingers to get into, the, sock, the bolt comes out with it, I don't need to worry about dropping it on the car. Now if I had a car that was not running properly, I'd want to put all these in the correct order so I can reassemble the same way and not move a problem from one cylinder to another cylinder. On a vehicle that's running correctly, it's not as big a deal. Same thing with the spark plugs. Now that I got all the spark plugs out, I want to connect my compression gauge hose. And I'm going to use this one right here. It has a Schrader valve on the end of it, and it has the right amount of threads compared to my spark plug. I don't want something too long that would go into the cylinder, and it's going to seal with the O-ring. So I'm going to put this into the first cylinder. Now one of the great things about using a remote starter is I don't need to worry about disabling the fuel system because I'm not turning the key on. So since the key's not on, the fuel pump's not turned on, the injectors won't be open. Okay, so I'm going to get my remote starter hooked up to my starter here. So I'm going to hook up to my trigger, trigger terminal right here, my S terminal, and I'm going to hook right here to the terminal that goes to my battery cable, which goes back to my battery. And with that hooked up, now I can crank the engine over without having the key on so I don't have to worry about disabling my fuel system. So I've got the remote starter hooked up. I'm going to want to, hold, I'm going to, want to look at the gauge, hold the throttle open, and I want to crank it through five to eight revolutions. Well, however many revolutions I do on this cylinder, I'm going to want to do the same for every one. So I went six times. I'm sitting almost 220 compression. So here's 220 pounds compression on cylinder one, and that's my dry compression reading. When the pressure is that high, there's no need to run a wet test. So I'm going to release the pressure and move on to the next cylinder. So 
So, 205. Two ten. And two ten. So we can see all of our cylinders here are between two oh five and two twenty. So clearly all within the ten percent were allowed. This is a pass from a mechanical condition, our engine cranking test, which tests for cylinder sealing. It passes manufacturer specification. Thank you for watching today.